Hello and welcome to Fun Bikes TV. My name is James and today we're going to do an assembly video on the electric MXR. To start off with we need to cut the banding on the box and then open the box using a knife or a pair of scissors carefully. Remove the polystyrene from the box you will find there are various parts within the top sections of the polystyrene. These will include your maintenance toolkit, a bag of various nuts, bolts and fixings, your front bar pad, your front wheel axle, your charger, your front number board and your manual. You'll find the wheel is tucked down the side of the bike with your front mud guard attached to it. We're now going to fit our handlebars to our bike. You'll find in your bag of various nuts, bolts and fittings. There are two handlebar clamps, two spacers, two longer bolts and two shorter cap head bolts. Locate your handlebars onto the clamps using the notches in the handlebars to help you align them in the central position. Take one of your handlebar clamps and place one of the shorter bolts through the front bolt hole. Then take your key barrel, one of the longer bolts and then slide the spacer on followed by a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. Loosely attach the key barrel to the rear side of the handlebars. And repeat the process on the opposite side. Using a six Allen key, nip the bars up to stop them moving around and to allow you to align them correctly. Taking your other shorter bolt, apply a small quantity of stud lock and then attach it through the remaining hole in the handlebar clamps at the front. Remove the first bolt you put in and apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads and then reattach it. Using the notches in your handlebars to make sure the bars are central within the clamps. We now need to align our handlebars, making sure that the notches in the handlebars are equal on both sides of the clamps, and then making sure that the centre bar is an equal distance between the front and rear bolts, and also in line with the forks. Once we've done this, we can start to tighten up our bars, making sure that the gap at the front and the rear of the clamps is equal on both sides. We're now going to make sure the bottom of our handlebar clamps are tight using a 17 socket and applying a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We're now going to make sure the headstock is tight using a 12 and 14 spanner. When we tighten it, make sure that your handlebars still turn freely and don't become notchy because it is possible to crush your bearings, but also make sure that there is no front to back play in the forks. Once you've done that, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the thread. We're now going to attach our front mud guard to the bike. Firstly, we need to remove it from the wheel, carefully cutting the cable tie. Remove the packaging from your mud guard and then using a 5 Allen key, remove the bolts for mounting the mud guard from the forks. Take a small quantity of stud lock and apply it to the end of the threads. Align your front mud guard into the correct position. And then reattach the bolt at the front using the shorter of the three bolts. 
and apply a small quantity of stilot to the two slightly longer bolts and attach them through the mudguard at the bottom into the forks. Once they are aligned, we can fully tighten the front mug guard, starting with the two lower bolts and then finishing with the bolt at the front. We're now going to attach our front number board to the bike. Remove the bolt in the centre of the forks. The holes on the bottom of your number board need to line with the two pins coming up from the mudguard. Apply a small quantity of sud dot to the end of the bolt and push it through the front number board. And then place a spacer onto the rear of it. And using the five Allen key, fully tighten the bolt. We're now going to remove the front brake cable from the front brake lever. Twist the adjusters around so that the grooves line up with the groove in the handlebar. Then pull the cable back, feeding it out, pressing the brake cable, twisting it round and pulling it out of the notch in the handlebars. Remove the cover from your front number board if you haven't already done so. And slide in the front brake cable through the number board and then reattach it to your brake lever. We'll take the adjuster around so it's fully wound in, but also making sure that the grooves do not all line up with the brake lever. We're now going to make sure the front brake disc is tight using the five Allen key on all three brake disc bolts. We're then going to use a 12 spanner to make sure that the retaining nut on the inner tube is tight. Once we've done this, we can fit our wheel to the bike. Take your front axle spindle, remove the nut and both spacers off the axle. Insert the bolt part way into the axle and then align your front wheel sliding the brake disc in between the caliper pads. Take one of your spacers and then slide it in between the front wheel and the fork leg. And pushing your bolt through. Insert your axle through so it just shows through the opposite side of the wheel. At which point you can then insert the second spacer. If we twist the fork out at the bottom slightly it allows us to put spacer on easily. And then push the bolt fully through the other fork leg. Attaching the nut and using a 14 and 17 spanner to fully tighten up the front wheel. When we tighten the front wheel, we do need to make sure that it still spins freely. However, we need to also make sure there is no side to side play at the top of the wheel. Once we're happy that we have the wheel set correctly, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We're now going to attach the rear shock bolt into the swing arm, lifting the rear wheel up to align it with the shock. Once we have the shock aligned, you take the bolt that was in the nuts and bolts bag and then push it through the rear shock and swing arm to attach the two together. Placing the nut onto the opposite end, fully tighten using a 10 and 13 spanner.
and then apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We're now going to tighten the stand using 14 and 17. Once we're happy it's tight, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. Using the 10 and 13 spanner, make sure the upper rear shock bolt is tight and apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We're now going to cut the cable tie holding the foot pegs in position. When you cut the cable tie, make sure you stay clear of the pegs as they will spring down quickly. We're now going to tighten the rear swing arm bolt using a 14 and 12 spanner. Once you're happy it is tight, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. Work your way around the vehicle using a 5 allen key, tightening all the plastic bolts. We now need to tighten the rear chain guard using a 4 allen key. Using a 14 and 17 socket, make sure your rear axle is tight and apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We're using a 5 allen key, we're going to make sure all disc bolts are tight and then tighten the rear brake caliper. We're now going to set and tighten our front brakes using a 5 allen key, tighten these two bolts. We need to make sure that our pads are as close as possible to the disc when we set the front brakes. Using an 8 spanner and 2.5 allen key, loosen off the front centre nut and wind the outer pad further away from the disc. Using these two adjusters, we're going to set the inner pad as close to the disc as possible without touching it. You can use a 5 allen key to adjust these. When you set them, make sure the gap at the top and bottom is equal and the disc is as close as possible to the pad without touching. Once you're happy with the far side, start to wind the inside pad back in. Again, setting it as close as possible without touching it. Once you're happy the pads are as close as possible, spin your front wheel over and keep pumping the brake on and off to make sure it's locking the front wheel. We will now repeat the process on the rear brake caliper. We're now going to level off our front brake levers. Using a 3 allen key, loosen off the throttle unit and rotate it down. And then using a 5 allen key, loosen off the front brake lever and angle that down slightly. When your child is sat on the bike, for comfort and ease of use, the levers need to be angled very slightly downwards. Once you're happy with the position of the lever, re-tighten the 5 allen key bolt and then make sure that the throttle unit is tight and secure. Moving over to the opposite side, repeat the process, looking across the bike to make sure that the levers are level with each other.
Once you are happy with the positioning, retighten the 5 Allen key on the brake lever. We're now going to set the tracking on the bike. To do this, we'll need to loosen off slightly the yoke bolts. Hold the front wheel between your legs, making sure you have the steering straight and twist the handlebars to align the front wheel. Keep checking your handlebars are straight and looking down to make sure that your wheel is pointing in the front line and tweak them accordingly. Once you're happy with this you can then tighten the yoke bolts. We're now going to fit our front bar pad. Remove the Velcro cover off it. Then using a pair of scissors carefully cut down the centre of the bar pad. Place it over the centre of the bars and then reattach the Velcro cover. We're now going to fit the fuse to the vehicle. Underneath the left tank scoop you'll find the fuse holder and it will be a fuse in the nuts and bolts bag. When you put it in, it will spark. Make sure the fuse is pushed in fully and then replace the cap over the top of it. Turn on your ignition key and make sure your battery indicator lights are lighting up. Then turn the vehicle off again. We're now going to put our vehicle on charge. Remove the charger from the box and untangle all the cables so that the charger does not overheat. Plug the plug into the charger. Remove the cover from the plug. Then remove the cover off the charge point. You'll find there is a small notch in the charge point and a notch in the charger itself. Align these together and push the charger in firmly before tightening the locking ring to hold it in place. Turn your charger on at the mains. When you put your charger on, the LED will flash green for a second and then turn to red to show the vehicle is charging. For your first charge, leave the vehicle on charge for 12 hours before removing it, regardless of whether the charger turns to green. And that's how you build your new vehicle. I hope you found this guide useful. Now let the fun begin.